Hey everyone, welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I have this lovely stone for you today that we're going to create with lots of golds and purples and corals and pinks. It really came out pretty well. It's an art stone I made with Quickcrete using the Happy Dotting Company's largest mold. I am also using Deco Art paints, and then we'll be using acrylic rods, a dotting stylus, etcher, and an angled paintbrush. If you're looking for some color palette inspiration, I have a Pinterest page here where I kind of do the latest project colors that I'm going to use. And you can subscribe to it, check it out, and find some inspiration if you're stuck on color combos. There's a ton here. I think I'm going to go with something along the lines of this, as you can see from the first one, and then I did my gunmetal background. So this is my art stone. I did gunmetal background, and the first dot we're going to put down is a large purple pizzazz using this 3 quarter inch acrylic rod. So the Happy Dotting Company mold has a little point in the middle to show you how to center it so we can get our first dot started off right. Now using the etcher and titanium white, I'm just going to do a ring of dots here around the first large center that we've put down. I hope you all had a great holiday season. I know we still have New Year's coming up and this is probably going to be my last video for the year. So we made it a colorful one, right? I know it's been an unusual year, but I'm hoping that you're finding some time for yourself to kind of calm down and be at peace, take a breather and get away from social media and other things that are highly stressful and just a little bit chaotic right now. So I'm just going around the outer edge here. This is my etcher tool and I'm using the gold end. So the dots are fairly small. It's probably one of the smallest if you have dotting styluses. It's the smallest dotting stylus end that you could use. Now I'm using the Angle Spot Detailer paintbrush, which is a t it's a size 10, so it's small. And I'm just going in between each of the dots that I've already put down here and working my way around, going a little bit larger. Not too much though. So if you're just using the dotting styluses, you could just use the same stylus. Just add a little more paint when you load it and you should be fine. The thing with the brush too is I'm not really like pushing it down. I kind of wiggle it a bit. All right, so next up I'm gonna grab this lovely lilac meadow. It's just a very light, light purple. And I'm using the paintbrush still. I'm just putting a little bit more pressure on it to make a little bit larger dots. So you can see too, as you push down a little bit, you're just kind of wiggling it into position as opposed to dotting like you would a dotting stylus, you're just kind of painting with the brush. Okay, 
And you can see too when you're up close and personal with what you're working on, you can tell every little thing that is not exactly lined up or not exactly the same size. And it's just something that over time you'll just let go of and enjoy creating. So just kind of let it go. Don't worry that it just was, you know, 16 dots instead of 17 or whatever if you're counting them. <laughs> just take a deep breath and enjoy the painting process. And these days, I mean, we all know we really could use some relaxation time and something that's calm and, you know, productive too. You know, you're still creating something beautiful with this. Alright, so let's go, like we're going to go from light to dark. So the next one I have is Orchid Blossom. And this is a little more pinkish of a purple. And it's one of the multi-surface satin paints. And these multi-surface ones are fun because they dry already cured. Um... You can use these on mugs as well, and then bake them in the oven, and they'll be sealed. You can use a dishwasher, hand wash, but I haven't had them come off yet in a dishwasher. And they can air dry. I think it's something like 45 days to air dry. But they have like a, a sheen to them when they dry on their own, even before you varnish your piece. So you can see I'm just overloading the brush a little now and painting little circles. Oop, I made a little gloop there. But I'm just painting little circles here along the way. When I do a little string like that, sometimes I'll just wait until it's dry and then I just kind of scrape it off with the other the metal end of the etcher tool. It just is easier to me rather than erasing the whole dot or trying to get in there with a silicone tip type tool. I just wait until it's dry and then scrape it. See? Just like this. So I also use my etcher to put guidelines in if need be. So I'm just kind of eyeballing these in here to give me an idea. I made a plus sign and now I'm doing the 45 degree angles. So just give me a kind of spatial relation and so you guys can see. But all I do is damp it with a wet cloth or my finger, dip it in water, and it erases the line afterwards. So that way you don't have any eraser pieces or anything like that. Um, and I've done that too, even you can etch in a stencil and that way you don't have to go back and find a way to erase your lines. So this one, in my screen it looks lighter, but it'll dry the same as the center. It's still the purple pizzazz. And we're just going in between each of the orchid blossoms that we put down on the ring before. And with dotting too, you can see this paint is fairly fluid, so if you're new, you want your paint to be kind of fluid when you're dotting. Um, unless you're going for the big poofy, poofy dots and using maybe different tools. But as far as painting with a brush or a dotting stylus, you kind of want them a little bit thinner so that they're more pliable 
viscous that are easier to work with that way. Okay, I'm gonna go back now and grab some more of that orchid blossom. And then we're gonna do eight just larger dots here. So I'll do my plus sign. And I'm just painting a circle. There's no trick or magic to the dotting with a paintbrush. You're just painting circles once you get to the larger, larger realm of dots. So it's my plus sign. And then we'll do the 45 degree angles as well. And that will give us eight dots around to start off the outer part of this mandala design. I'm really kind of excited too to see how this pans out with this gunmetal background. I'm really liking this background color. All right, and now either side of this orchid, I'm going to come in and we're going to put a little bit of the metallic. I'm sorry, dazzling metallic berry. So with the brush, I'm just coming in on either side of those orchid blossom, larger purple dots, and just putting two dots of the metallic berry. All right, now I'm going to take our etcher and we're going to do some swipes here with this fruit punch, one of the multi-surface paints. And this one lying down is gonna serve as a guide to do the other ones around. And I moved my camera angle in here, so excuse my little winter hat that I have on. <laughs> it actually kind of matches my paint here. I'm surrounded by windows. It was chilly in the studio. So I'm not doing anything but dip and then let a little bit of paint come off and then drag the dot out into a swipe. Very simple. This tool makes it really easy. You'll get used to using it. You can practice on cardstock and stones and a bunch of different ways to see how far, how much paint you can drag out for each line. And it's so fun too. You'll see on this stone we're going to do some other creative designs. There we go with the tropical. And this one is called Cactus Flower. It is one of the 2020 colors that DecoArt came out with this year. And it's really just a beautiful coral color, but on my screen here, it was being temperamental. This stone, the background is so shiny, it plays with my camera, and so I've been trying to adjust it here to get just the right colors to show you, but we'll see as we go that it's going to change throughout the video a little bit. But this is the cactus flower, and it's one of the normal Americanas, so it's not multi-surface, it's not metallic it's just the base Americana acrylic and I'm going up above our tropical fruit punch here a little bit to kind of do something different sometimes you know we go 
and the progressive size down, but I kind of want to make it higher on the sides here, almost like, I don't know, the wispy center of a flower. Some flowers have like the wispy stamens, that kind of idea. But somebody was asking if I could do pinks and purples and gold, so that's where we're headed with this stone. I didn't have enough on that one. I wasn't going to be able to drag it as far as I wanted, so I just double dipped it again. But again, that just comes with practice and with time of using these, so I just knew I wasn't going to have enough to pull it this long tail out like I want. Also, too, if your paint starts to get dry, it gets a little thicker. It makes it harder, so just keep it really viscous. Keep it fluid. Add a little pouring medium into it, or flow medium if you need it a little thinner. But that'll really help you. And this metallic background paint is so smooth to drag on. I made two of the quick crete stones, and these are heavy duty. I should have sanded them down a little bit, which you could do, just to kind of smooth them out a bit. Um, but it's kind of like the challenge of something that's flawed, but still pretty, you know. Just like real stones. But I just wanted to see if the quick crete would work in this mold and how it was, because it's fairly cheap. All right, this is a little bit better of the color scheme, so you can kind of see that the cactus flower is a little bit lighter. It's not as orange as it was in the previous frame. So this is a vintage pink, and it does look a little corally on here, but it's just a little bit lighter. And we're just kind of doing this as you are writing like a cursive number two or the top of a number two. So I'm going to put down the dot up and around to give us that kind of arced dot off to the side and then pull out our tail. Alright, so again I'm using the etcher tool, the gold end, and this vintage pink we're just doing a dot and then like the number two, drag it up around and down into a tail. And you can direct that tail you know, wherever you want it to go, make all sorts of different creations with this. And even while you're working with it wet, you can drag it out even longer just by grabbing the tail a little more, a little more paint. So there's lots of options with these kinds of elements just adding to your design. I think that's the fun with the mandala. It's like I've said before in the past that it's like a choose your own adventure kind of. You can add new things to it, change it up, different color, different size, different size dots, different elements that you add to it are going to change the mandala every time. It's, it's a lot of fun. And this tool makes this, this type of element a lot easier. So I'm working with it wet here, so I don't want to get too close to the other ones because I didn't let them dry all the way. And they will bleed into one another if you get them too close, if they touch. So I'm just staying just far enough away that I'm not hitting the ones next to it that are wet. So this is on the other side, so you kind of have to think backwards. So it's not really a number two anymore, but you're just going to start out a little bit and then come back around. So my space in here was a little smaller than I thought. So I want to get a little bit less paint on my tool because I didn't want it to bleed into the one next to it. And I want to just tuck it down in there with the tail under. But this gives it kind of that whimsical effect too. And 
And you can see too, I'm just taking my time, take it slow, and then you can direct it where you want it to go. I didn't mean to make that rhyme. <laughs> but you just take your time and then come back up and I like, ran out on that one. I could grab the tail again and drag it out a little farther. So it's just taking your time and enjoying the process of painting. Alright, so now I have some vintage brass and this is one of the extreme sheen paints. It's really, really pretty metallic. And I'm just kind of going upside down underneath those vintage pinks, the opposite direction. So you get kind of a yin yang thing going. So just by that purple. And sometimes I'll just look at my screen or I'll take a picture of it and take a screenshot and just kind of see, you know, do I want to put something in there? Is it okay as negative space in my mind? But it just is kind of your own flow as an artist. The only thing with these extreme sheens is to be cautious that you don't have a string that drops off. That's the only difficulty when using the tools. It can be a little tiny stringy. And yes, I have to shake, shake, shake them. I get asked this all the time. I do have to shake them a lot. They separate. But I feel like it's worth it because they come out so shiny. Alright, so I'm going to... I'm thinking I'm going to put a big dollop in the center here. Maybe gold. Maybe put gold. With the acrylic rod. I'll just go with the vintage brass here again. Um, nope, it's not doing what I want. We'll see. This is going to be a work in progress. I can tell the center, so I'll put a little purple pizzazz over it. Let's let's see. I did wet on wet, so let's see if we can drag some things here through it and see what it does. But again, sometimes this is just playing with paint and. I just like to see what it'll do doing the paint pours or mixing it up, mixing colors. And so I just wanted to see if I could make it kind of like, you know, the swirl in a peppermint. I swirl the gold right through the purple. We'll see if it works. You can't see it as well on the screen just yet. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm feeling it for this piece, but it's fun just kind of messing around to see what it'll do. It does kind of look like a peppermint center. I'll probably dot over it when it dries though. But you can see it's getting puffier and puffier just by putting layers too. So that's another way to get the 3D dots if you don't have cones or one of the needle tip ap applicators. So I have titanium white now with my etcher. And I'm going around some fruit punch dots that I put on the outskirts here, just in line with the purple dots that we put down at the base. And we're going to do, I think I'm going to do three rings. Oh, maybe we'll just do one ring of white around these. And when we move out a little farther, we'll get three. So these fruit punch dots are the same size as the purple ones. I'm not sure my camera wasn't on. so, it, But all I did was put them a little farther out so I could make one ring of the white all the way around them. So they're kind of separated from the piece, but you'll see it'll work. We'll connect it here in a minute with some gold. <clears throat> so in here, I'm going to try and drag one of these designs all the way around 
and have it come up around that dot that we just finished. So I'm usually using some of the um, metallic paint here. This one is the 40 karat gold. No, oh, forgive me. This is a Venetian gold. And I'm just dragging it out and then I'm going to dot around. So it didn't go quite as far as I wanted it to. I probably could have gone back and grabbed the tail a little longer, but I think we'll keep the dot idea going up around these. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. It'll be a fun way to kind of connect the center to the dots. So it's a little tighter in here. So I'm just going to be careful that I don't get too crazy with it off to the side and we'll pull it up just next to our little element up here and then the finish off part will dot all the way around with that Venetian gold. And the thing about this Venetian gold too is you can, it's got a little, little bit more orangey copper color to it. So then you're tying in the gold, but you're also tying in the pinks too. So you get that warmer effect with the paints. So we're just pulling this little one. See, I didn't have enough paint to go, but I'll pull it up onto the side here just by dotting it again, dipping in the paint that's already wet. And then we're going to dot around the element again. This is fun. But I think it's a fun kind of loose, whimsical way too to tie in and bring these dots into the piece like they're connected. And we'll do the around every single one of these. And you can see on some of these a little space underneath is a little snug, but if you get your tail skinny coming out of the gate between those vintage pinks, you can just kind of bring it up through. And it's not the end of the world if you overlap your paints. I mean, these are dry now, so I'm just overlapping some of them even. But if you like everything perfectly lined up, you can always put in guidelines that way too and then just follow along. Your spacing will be a little more concise. But over the years, and especially this year, I'm just more in the mindset of relaxing and enjoying where each piece takes us. Alright, so now I'm just kind of thinking what I want to do next here. I think I'll top dot each of these with some darker raspberry. And that's a really nice color too, the raspberry. And it is one of the multi-surface ones as well, so it will have that little bit of sheen to it. I mean, these are the satin ones, but when they dry, it still has that kind of look to, that it's already varnished. All right, so back to the brush here. I'm just going to start painting in some circles with some lavender. 
And that's the regular acrylic, the Americana. And I'm giving us some space because I want to kind of make this a little farther out of an element out here to give us a little space. I like seeing this metal shine through, so I'm trying to leave bits of negative space here so we can still see the base background colors. And again, I'm not pushing down really hard because it'll ruin the tip on these um, paint brushes, but I'm just painting it into a circle. So the paint is thinnish, fluid, and then you're just painting it around in a circle. So this is about, probably if you had your dotting styluses, it's just a little bit larger than the green dotting tool if you have the rainbow set. So a little bigger than three millimeters, just painting, painting a circle. All right, now I'm going to come back in here with the etcher tool. And I have one of the lighter purple of the multi-surface. This one's Lavender Fields. So it's a little bit lighter. And I'm just going to come in here and see what I can do with... I'm going to erase that one. <laughs> I'm just testing out to kind of see where I want to go. So I switch now to show you the, the, the dotting tool, and I'm actually going to go the opposite direction here. Show you, you can make these with the dotting tool as well as the etcher. So it's just a small dotting tool that's angled. And this allows me to hook a little bit more paint on it so that I can go a little farther as well. But you can do this with the etcher. Just you got to remember, you might have to double dip to get the longer length for the tail so that you have a little excess paint to pull out. But it's doable. You can use all sorts of tools for the same thing. This is something, too, that you can even use a paintbrush with. It just takes a little bit of practice with each one, and you'll get used to it. And then you'll never look back. Just have fun creating. And you can see too, this gives it a little bit of movement because you're giving that flow on an angle. I think we're calling these mukas, but you're just kind of up and around and then drag the tail out and down to that gold section where we had the smaller dots. Just aim for the other side there. And then you get that good angle. So you can really drag it out farther just by dipping and pulling it longer. I'm just going to reshape this a little here, but you can really pull it farther and just kind of get it the way you want. So we'll have eight of these as well because they're going along with the same elements. See, I kind of had a little dip hook on the back of that. I just smoothed it out by going over it again. Not enough paint, so I double dipped. And there you go. So sometimes you get into this and you're wondering, well, what do I do next? But there's a lot of things that we can do with this. I'm going to come back in here with that raspberry that we used and just put two dots of the raspberry at the top of each of these tropical pinks. And sometimes, like I said, I'll stop, I'll take a picture or look at my screen and just kind of take a different look at it, you know, a different point of view. Sometimes I'll even walk away and come back to it just to think about what I want to do with it.
Now I have a little bit of that uh, lavender fields that we did those long ones with. Let's carry it into the center here and put it in the middle of our dots here. Just to give it a little bit of a highlight on these. And that's something too to add depth. You can just do darks and lights up, down. And it really, really, really adds to a piece. I am not liking the center, so I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> I'm going to go back over it with the purple pizzazz here. I'm just using a flat angled brush to just kind of paint over it here and fix it. And I just don't want to get too far into the sides because I don't want to get it on the white hair. But I do want to make sure I covered all that gold up. But that's part of the process too. It's just working through. It looks better, I think, to me as a solid dot instead of the swirls. So now I am actually taking some baby pink. And I'm going on top of that vintage pink with the baby pink to put some smaller dots here. Just give it a little highlight. Okay, now I'm grabbing some Rich Espresso, which is one of the Dazzling Metallics, and I'm painting a dot above each of our little gold and pink elements that we have here to just kind of keep that metallic vein going. But also, I don't want to draw too much attention to it right now. I just want to have like a darker metallic out this way. And I'm keeping it about the same size, so the large 3mm stylus would do the trick on here. And again, you're just painting it into a circle. Okay, so I actually let those ones dry and we're going to go around each one of these espresso dots with three rings of the titanium white. So, a little bit smaller at the bottom and a little bit larger at the top. So you'd be walking your dots if you're doing the dotting styluses, so they're a little bit bigger at the top. And then as you work your way around to the bottom, they just are smaller dots. And while we do these three rings around each of these dark espresso, I'm just going to give you some music from a good friend of mine, Chris Anton, who does some musical instrumentals for me here for the video.
Alright, how are you guys doing? Finishing up these last rings. It really adds to the effect of this. So, after those three rings, I'm gonna come in on the side and we're going to do one ring of that fruit punch to kind of carry that color here out through our piece and just kind of create that connectivity with this. And this angle too kind of gives you an idea that I'm not really pushing down hard on the brush. See the bristles are barely moving. So I'm not pounding it down like a stylus dotting. We're just kind of gently painting in the dots here as you work your way around. So they're about all the same size as the white ones that we put around. A little larger at the top and then you kind of let it run off the tool as you go around and press a little lighter to get the smaller dots. So as we work around here, I'm just going to take this opportunity to thank you guys so much for this year. It has been such a pleasure painting with you all. I hope you continue to watch throughout the next years and so. We'll come up with different designs, of course, and work together on dotting and having a calm art community. <laughs> I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, although admittedly they are... A little finicky lately so if you go to my website mirandapatronart.com you can connect with me there through the contact form it goes right to my personal email and that's probably a better bet that I'm gonna get your message if we go that direction <laughs> just because of all the changes that are happening on social media so again as always if you comment just even say hi something in the comments to help me keep these videos going that's something that doesn't cost you anything and it helps these videos keep going through youtube all right so i'm switching now to the etcher and we're going to continue with that fruit punch so we're going to go opposite direction here and we're just going to drag the tail up almost to the top of the purple But it's just going to fill in that side space and help bring our pink throughout the piece here and continue it, continue it, ugh, continuing it out. All right, I'm going to leave that one in there. Stutter step. <laughs> now with the temporary studio, I've been having less bloopers. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but really it's because I'm coming back and editing over it when people are asleep or doing the narration differently so that I don't have everyone in the background here in the living room. So thanks again for bearing with me throughout this year. This fruit punch is just so rich. I kind of get obsessed with this pink and I'm really not usually a pink person, but I do like this one. It's really lovely. And it kind of helps complete our little area here. And then I just keep kind of looking back over at spots where I feel like it needs something a little extra. So, in even just top dots too, I'm going to come in here with some purple amethyst. And this is such a great metallic purple. I'm just going to top dot on here. And the amethyst is one of the extreme sheens, so it does have a little bit of a string to it. So I gotta, even with the brushes, I'll have to kind of wiggle it a little and then pull up so that it doesn't drop that string onto my piece. But I'm just putting one on each of the top dots of this purple. All right, so I am going to take this acrylic rod and put a dark purple in the center here of the amethyst. I don't know why, I just feel like it needs some depth. So I'm going to do the same as we just did with those smaller dots and just kind of tuck it in the center here. And it's smaller than the three quarter inch. I think this one's three eighths of an inch. I'll put the sizes too up here, but three-eighths of an inch dot in the center of the three-quarter inch center. So again, I just take a minute here to look through and I'm feeling like I want to carry the white in this zone because we have the white on the outskirts and we have the white in the center, but 
I feel like it's divided up quite a bit, so I, I'm going to use the metal end, and I'm going to bring it with the titanium white, and I'm going to do some little tiny muka swipes. Maybe I'll call them muka swipes. I'm still looking for a name for these. Maybe you guys could vote on that in the comments. <laughs> Just a little flourish here. And you can see it's having a minute where it doesn't want to come off the tool. So I'm actually, I can get extra on or I can dot it with the gold end and then drag it with the metal end. But the metal end is really what I want to work with because it's so much smaller and it's more precise here. It's going to get a little bit tucked in and I'm only going to do them on this side where we have the Venetian gold. And it's just a finer point. But I think too, the white bringing it in here helps draw your eye to the whole piece as opposed to, oh, the white in the center, oh, the white on the outskirts. You know, just that little, little, little bit of white in here will help. And that one kind of blobbed, so I'm not super psyched about that. I'm going to take my silicone tool here quick and just kind of scrape it up. And that's what a lot of people use the silicone tools for, I think, is to just kind of clean up their piece. And it comes right off this metal, the metallic surface, pretty easily. So I'm thankful for that. I'll just wipe it with a little bit of water here. And then we can come back in and repaint that. It just had a bigger block than I wanted, so I'm going to dot it with the gold end. And it gets just enough paint, so then I can use the metallic end here to just pull out a small tail. And it's a little more decorative even that way, so I might do that here too. So we're just trying to tuck it into a fairly small area, so I don't want to use too much paint, just a little dot. And then we give it a little tail here. And we'll have eight of those, so we'll do them all the way around here. And I think, yeah, that's exactly what I needed, was just a dash of white in here to kind of break up. I don't know if it was too dark, it just I needed something to draw my eye in here and just keep that white going. If you bring it throughout the piece, it just makes it more cohesive that way. So you have the white in the center, the middle, and then the outskirts too. But that's something too, you play around with it, you'll see. Oh, my focus is going crazy. Here we go. So if you want any of these things, the turntable, the paint brushes, the etcher tool, I put all the links of the paints I use, the colors I use, in the description below, just so you guys have it there for reference. Alrighty, we are done with this big guy. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So much colorfulness for this new year. I wish you all a happy new year. Thanks for hanging with me this year, and I'm looking forward to next year with you all too. Happy New Year's. Bye.